Magnar and welcome back to episode 3 in my modern tutorial series for Rome 2 Total War. In this episode I'm going to take you through how a pack file is organized and then we will set up the base for create the organization of our own modding files, uh, folders, so that we can start modding in an organized way and be able to find everything as we get going. So first things first, we're going to use PFM for this. If you don't have it, there's a link down below. So we'll open it up. Now there's two ways you can open up a pack file. Um, a, you can have it set as the default tool to open those files, or you can go through Pack File Manager and just go open. Go to your Rome 2 data directory, or wherever the pack file is. For this one, we're going to open up data underscore Rome 2. This is where all the database files are. Okay. So now if we open this up, you can see it's kind of like it's like a folder directory, a file directory. You've got the Rome 2 folder, then all these other folders, DB folder, and then folders for different tables, such as that. And that's exactly what it is. These are just folders. And then we've got the actual files that we use to edit underneath them. And there you've got folders for all sorts of things scripting, visual effects, user interface, so many different files. The actual tables in the database, and there's about 800 of them, and uh, we won't go looking at all of them now, but we will get to a lot of them throughout the course of this tutorial series. When we create our modding folders, our WIP folders, let's go to my tutorial. This is my tutorial folder. This is where I'll be putting all the files that we work with throughout the course of this tutorial series. And we're going to essentially create them exactly as they are in the packs. To start off with, I'll create two folders right now. One called WIP. This is where anything that I edit or create I'll put in here so that I can look it up and reference it quite quickly and easily. And I'm going to create another one called uh, I don't know, vanilla extracted folder files. This one is for things which we're going to extract from the vanilla files, like the textures and the models, or also we can extract um, database tables, all this kind of stuff. We can extract to there. We're not going to change them directly. We're going to copy them into the WIP folder and then edit them there so that if we have to get a fresh one we can get it without having to worry about if we've edited or not already. So that's pretty much all we need to do to set up how we're going to do it. When we get into here we're going to actually create exactly the same file structure. So within the WIP we're going to have folders like, I'm not going to, don't need to do it now but I'm just going to illustrate what I mean. We're going to have folders like DB and then in there we're going to have, we may have a folder called KV Experience Bonuses tab, or whatever it is. But we don't need to add that in yet, because that's not part of this tutorial. Before we get into any more looking at uh, organization stuff, let's talk about the naming of your mod pack. To illustrate this, I'm going to open up one of my own mods, so you can see what I mean. Uh, times one. So this is one of my mods. One of, this is my one of my unit module mods. See, I've got a number of different folders. We got animations there. Animations, animations, DB, DB, text. Text isn't in this uh, data run two folder, so that's in another one. Um, but when you create your own mod, you're creating the exact same data structure as is in the actual game pack files. With PFM, as you, if you had to watch my last episode, uh, I spoke a little about c PFM being cr able to create more compatible mods, um, with other mods that is, um, than the assembly kit. And the re one of the big things for that is here. I can change the name of my tables to be whatever I want. In the kit, I couldn't. And the big advantage to this is. 
if I put a custom name table in there, it will read that table additionally to the vanilla tables. Or if I edit lines in a vanilla table, it will overwrite only those lines in the vanilla table and not the whole table. And having a uniquely named table will not cause any conflicts which other, with other mods which might also use those tables to create their mod. So I can have multiple mods all working together without conflicting. If they all used vanilla named, vanilla named tables like this one here, then one table would overwrite the other and you would only be able to use one of your, those mods that use the same table. There is, however, a good purpose and a good time to use vanilla named tables. In fact, there's one reason to use it. And that is if you're going to remove entries from the vanilla table. For example, in my mod, I don't, I delete a lot of the vanilla units. I will replace a roster completely um, with completely new roster, completely new units, and I will remove all the vanilla units for that faction. For example, Rome. And the way I do that is I don't delete the actual unit. I just delete the access to the unit. So for this table here is where we say, okay, this building will recruit this unit. If we look through here, we won't find any Roman, for example, because I've overhauled the Roman roster, uh, any Roman citizen units. So go down to Rome. What we see here is we see, look, artillery, we see ships, these two, two fire pots on it. That, that means it's a ship. If it was just a study, then it would be a land infantry unit. But we don't see any of the vanilla units here. They're all ships and artillery and war dogs for some reason. I don't know why I haven't deleted that yet. So that's the only reason you should be using a vanilla name table. All your other tables should have some kind of change to them. You don't have to keep the name of the table in there. You can just name it whatever you want. I could name this one, two, three, and it wouldn't make a difference. It would still load because it loads based on the folder name. So that's pretty much all you need to know for the moment. In the next episode, we're going to go start making our very first uh, small mod, just to get familiar with how to create a mod um, and how to load it up, all that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.